morning. Thank you. Let's go to the next slide. Uh, we appreciate the opportunity and the invitation from from our our friends at the Actuarial Academy to present. Um, we have some introductory slides about the actuarial profession, and um, we'll probably won't spend a lot of time on these um, in the sense that our, our friends from the IFOA have spent a nice job talking about the work of actuaries and the, the opportunities for actuaries. I would just say that that for both Josh and I as as actuaries ourselves qualified through the the Society of Actuaries, there are some some great opportunities in terms of of, of the satisfaction and the work that, that actuaries do having a, a significant impact on society. Even though we're a relatively small profession, uh, I think we have an outsized impact on the world through our work with insurance and pensions and social insurance systems and some of the traditional areas we've referred to, as well as some of the areas that um, actuaries are working on in the future. Uh, let's go to the next slide. In the next slide, we talk about some of the opportunities for actuaries. And again, uh, historically, actuaries have worked in, in the insurance area, uh, managing risk and, and pricing and reserving for insurances, for pensions, doing enterprise risk management and, and so on. Uh, but there are many new opportunities. And, and again, our, our friends from the IFOA just made reference to those sorts of roles the work of actuaries in, in new areas such as climate risk, um, AI, uh, big data, predictive analytics, uh, uh, insure tech, banking. Uh, so there's a lot of different opportunities for actuaries beyond just the traditional roles. And so I think it's an uh, exciting time to be an actuary as, as those opportunities expand and develop. Again, can we go to the next slide now? A little bit of information about the Society of Actuaries. I know for many in East Africa, particularly in Kenya, you might be more familiar with with the Institute and Faculty of Actuaries that are certainly uh, a little bit more prevalent in that market. But the Society of Actuaries is also uh, one of the one of the largest associations around the world. Uh, we have 32,000 members. By members, in our case, we're talking about credentialed actuaries. So those who have either earned the associate or the fellowship credentials through the Society of Actuaries. In addition to that, then we have over 30, uh, 32,000 uh, individuals still in the credentialing process. So we define our membership a little bit differently than the IFOA does, but uh, you can see that we're also spread around the world, uh, e increasingly so as, as you see on the right chart, uh, with more mem more candidates uh, being uh, uh, more geographically diverse around the world, a lot in Asia, growing numbers in in the, in the Middle East and Africa and so on. So uh, we are focused on 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 supporting the growth growth of the profession globally. If we go to the next slide, um, and yeah, let's yes, exactly. Yes, please go to the next slide with the yes. So what we do, we do not have a explicit student membership program that is a requirement to take exams. I think in our our um, our in the previous uh, presentation, there were two exams from the IFOA, if I remember correctly, that, that can be taken before you join as a student member, but then you have to continue on the exams. You need to become a student member. The SOA is different. We've, we've, we've taken a different approach to that historically, not requiring any sort of membership until you, until you actually attain your associate credential. However, we have in the last two years created a free affiliate membership. And so if you're interested in that, there is a QR code that you could even scan right now and sign up while you're listening. Um, our affiliate membership is really focused on candidate students and also even faculty uh, university professors who might want to be connected to the profession and influence students um, if we go to the next slide then the benefits uh, what we're trying to do is create a community of of exam takers and those interested in the profession there are some opportunities for networking uh, mentoring uh, e-learning content um, and other activities 
that, that are available through that uh, affiliate program. And um, I know there's a, a growing number of affiliates in, in Africa that, that, that are, are participating in that. We hope we, people find that valuable, particularly through the mentoring process to learn about the profession, uh, to, to uh, get some, uh, just an idea. Because even though the, the process of, of completing the exams is, is something that you need to do on your own, uh, no colluding when you're, when you're taking exams, the process is important to have a network around you uh, because it's a difficult process. Again, as Irene mentioned, it's not easy becoming an actuary. We don't apologize for the rigor of our exams and our process, but we want you to have be a part of a community. So that's important. Uh, if we go to the next slides then, uh, we'll get into a little bit of um, our credentials. So, so these are all the components one must uh, work through uh, to become an associate of the Society of Actuaries. Again, that was, um, you know, there's equivalent levels at the IFOA. Um, at, at the, these are the components we consider for, for becoming an associate. Um, you'll see there's different colors on this screen, and those colors really represent the different sorts of approaches to to testing. So in some cases there are pure exams and that's what's in the sort of the bluish color in the green color those what's labeled VE those are what we call validation by educational experience so that means that you have to show us that you have a uh, uh, have, have passed at an acceptable level um, a, a university course in those topics economics, accounting and finance and mathematical statistics. Then the orangish, uh, uh, orange yellow um, colors are that, that are labeled e-learning. Those are components that are online modules. So uh, typically for the online modules, there's still an assessment at the end, but it's not as rigorous. So, so it's 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 more one uh, a different approach to to uh, helping you to uh, learn the material and so on. And then off on the right, we have. Uh, something in red, that's an associate professionalism course. And that's important because, again, as Irene emphasized in her presentation, being part of the actual profession is you are you are a profession part and and being a part of a profession has brings uh, responsibilities with it related to a code of ethics and professionalism standards and all of that. So whether, you're a member of the IFOA or the Actual Society of South Africa or the, the, the Actual Society of Kenya or the Society of Actuaries or multiple of those associations. We all stress the importance of ethics and professionalism in what we do. And that's something that we uh, make sure that we include in our credentialing pathway so that people understand that all, all the way along the, the process. If we go to the next slide then, um, once you complete your associate, then you have the ability to become a fellow of the Society of Actuaries. And again, similar to the IFOA, there are different tracks you can choose to focus on. Right now we have six tracks and you can see those listed uh, on in the middle, corporate finance, quantitative finance and investment, individual life and annuities, retirement benefits, group and health insurance and general insurance. It just so happens that both Josh and I took the retirement benefits track. Again, in this area, when you're when you're at this point in your career, this is this is not something students do as undergraduates, uh, or very few do that as undergraduates. Uh, the most you would get to this fellowship level probably three to five years into your career at least. Um, again, there's a series of exams, online modules, then there's uh, uh, um, uh, e-learning component with DMAC, which is decision making and 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 communication, and then a final um, what we call fellowship admissions course, where there's more focus on presentation skills and and um, professional case studies around ethics and so on, and a, a sort of a, a graduation ceremony at the end. So that's the the the, the approach at a very high level, quick level for the um, becoming an actuary with the Society of Actuaries. Again, just to highlight a few of our um, approaches to things. We do have a variety of testing approaches. Our initial exams uh, are all multiple choice. 
So exams P, FM, probability, financial mathematics, fundamentals of actuarial mathematics and statistical risk methods. Those first four exams are all um, multiple choice. The first two of which are actually offered six times a year. The next two are offered three times a year. Then the subsequent exams after that are all two times a year. We do have a, a variety of approaches. Some are through e-learning modules. Some actually take a case study. And, and, and so our predictive analytics exam is really very focused on kind of a case study approach, giving you a business problem to solve. Uh, we do take a different approach to how we offer the test. So all of these exams, well, except for the e-learning modules, but any of the exam components, they are offered through Prometric testing centers. There are um, testing centers across Africa. I know there's one in Nairobi. Uh, we've taken a different approach. I know than the IFOA um, and our approach for the Prometric testing centers is to try and create a, a level equitable um, playing field for all candidates, whether they're taking the exams again in Nairobi or in Chicago or in Beijing, they all have a similar testing experience. Uh, we use that because we're concerned about collusion and, and that using these promester testing centers really eliminates that opportunity for, for students uh, to do that there again, and there's no required student membership fee. One, let's go to the next slides. Um, we do have something we call micro-credentials. And the micro credentials are just simply stepping stones on the way to becoming an ASA or an associate. Uh, we have digital badges that you can earn on the way, and we have three of these micro credentials. In some cases, these micro credentials may become a stopping point for students if they maybe start part way through the exams, don't make it all the way through, but um, you can stop at some of these points, and then you at least have something to show for your for your work because becoming even an associate is a it's again it's a rigorous process it can take you know four to six years typically to become an associate and so if somebody decides they're not quite ready to go all that way then they still have something to show for the work but even if they don't uh even if they continue through the associate which is what we hope most people do they will have these milestones on the way and there are things that you can put in your in your cv uh, to show that you've mastered that content if we go to the next slide then this will show um, what is uh, needed for each of the micro credentials. So the first micro credential, we call it pre-actuarial foundations. Those are all the components in this column that's highlighted, financial mathematics, probability, and these other components. If we go to the next slide, then uh, you'll, uh, you need the foundation material, but then we add in uh, what we consider kind of the foundational actuarial science content around fundamentals of actuarial mathematics and statistics for risk modeling and, and the other components shown here. Then we have a third micro-credential, which is sort of a standalone micro-credential. It can, you know, if, if, if somebody's particularly interested in data science, we, we see this as uh, something that people might want to do on their own, just do these exams related to data science. Um, and these components, and you can get the data science for actuaries micro credential. Okay, and then let's go one more slide. So, all right, um, we have some study tips. Let's go back one slide. Um, Josh, I don't know if there's anything you wanted to add at this point. On, on, I know it's a few a few years ago when you were working through your exams, but any ideas on study tips or passing exams that you would like to add to? this discussion before we um, go to the uh, continue. Yeah, well, yeah. my experience uh, maybe is not typical. Um, it, first of all, I started in the consulting field rather than uh, in an insurance company. Um, and I was very interested in what was going on. I'm sorry about that. My image should not be quite that bad. but. I think it makes me look better. Uh, I wanted to start with, make no mistake, these exams are a serious thing. They're rigorous. Uh, you cannot uh, dilly-dally your way through them. Uh, my first exam, uh, I passed with very little study. I had just gotten out of college and, and uh, the material there was pretty, elementary. I mean, calculus and linear algebra and, and most of the things that uh, the previous speakers have mentioned. Uh, 
the I passed that quickly and easily. Uh, the next exam uh, was statistics and probability. It took me two tries. The third exam took me three tries. The fourth exam took me four tries. So it took me 10 years to get uh, to the ASA, which uh, is maybe not, not so unusual at the, that time, which was 30, 40 years ago. But uh, right now it would be very unusual for someone uh, to take that long or to even stick with it that long. Uh, there were, there's a lot of challenges uh, that one of the previous speakers mentioned. Uh, I mean, there's girlfriends, boyfriends, there's spouses, parents, poverty in some cases. Uh, if you're trying to take the exams, for, for instance, while going to graduate school uh, without, without uh, substantial help from an employer, um, partying, you still, you know, you don't want to totally give up your social life. Crazy bosses sometimes who don't understand, who got there the hard way and aren't that serious about uh, giving you exam time. Uh -huh. Some some of the work is boring. Uh, I actually did start with big green columnar pads and a pencil and doing calculations you know, on my desk, uh, I had a calculator, a, a, you know, four function calculator, but uh, just a lot of challenges. But it, I wasted a lot of study time. Um, I studied just enough to not pass these exams, which meant it was almost a total loss. So I exhort you uh, to put in the time that you're supposed to um, Try to be interested in it. Don't just think of it as an imposition or as, as some kind of persecution. Uh, this material is interesting. The further you go, uh, it's fascinating. So what, now if I were taking those exams again, I would just say, oh, that's so interesting. And then it sticks in your brain and you don't have to memorize so many things. Uh, so anyway, I, I had other comments that I may make uh, at the end of, uh, of, of Andy's segment, but uh, I'll save some of them uh, hopefully for the Q&A portion of the program. So Andy, please go ahead. Yeah, thanks, Josh. I, I would just echo the, the, the importance of, of setting a plan and sticking to it. That was sort of my, my uh, thing. And I, again, don't be... Uh, uh, don't be disappointed if you don't pass exam on first attempt. That's just normal in the actuarial space that uh, that it does take multiple times sometimes to pass exams. Um, and so that's that's not something you know, it's not like university where where you're, if you have to take a failing grade home to your parents, it's it's very disappointing that that it's a different approach in the exam in the in the actuarial world. Um, and um, Josh made some reference to some 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 specific topics, some of which have evolved um, in terms of, of 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 what we test on, and that's part of the importance of of our whether IFOA or SOA. Both made we both made reference to changes in our exam system, and so that's important that we're, we're evolving the system on an ongoing basis, adding new topics to make sure that we're testing actuaries on the information they need to know today, not the information that was from historical periods. Uh, let's go to the next slide. We do have some resources available. Um, we have sample exams, for example, for, for probability and FM available on our website. Uh, certainly people can connect with us afterwards. If you have troubles finding that, um, certainly feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm under, actually under Andy Peterson on LinkedIn if you want to connect that way. If we go to the next slide, um, uh, just another aspect is just uh, of, it's important to, if possible, to find internships. Um, while you're working or while you're in university. Um, I know that can be more of a challenge in, in the African context where particularly depending on your country, the profession might be relatively new, but that's something I certainly strongly encourage if possible. If we go to the next slide, then again, a few more opportunities for connect, connection and um, uh, we have a candidate newsletter and um, other other sorts of events that, that one can learn about um, through, through the newsletter. Um, and then 
one more slide on uh, um, actually let, let's go to one more slide and then we'll I'll come back to Josh um, for any final comments. Uh, just want to encourage as as most organizations these days we we also have our our presence on on various social media um, uh, resources. So encourage you to connect with the SOA on whether it's on YouTube or through the LinkedIn and uh, Facebook, Twitter, all those all those Instagram, um, all those means. And again, I'm happy to connect with anybody on LinkedIn as well. Actually, Josh and I both have experience uh, working internationally. I, I, I'm in Chicago at the moment, but uh, I worked in Zurich, Switzerland for three years. I know Josh worked across a lot of Latin America. Um, so the, the profession as a whole, as again, as our um, colleagues from the IFOA, uh, Simba referenced his, his opportunities he's had as an actuary to work in many different varied opportunities. So I think I, I would just highlight the opportunities that, that getting a credential provides to you for a future, whether it's in uh, Africa or in other nations, um, and that sort of global mobility that, that a, a credential from the IFOA or the SOA brings to you. So thanks to the pre presenters or to the Actuarial Academy for the invitation to present, and we'll look forward to answering questions later. Thank you.